Hello, everybody, and welcome. How cool is our new intro, our new technology? We're really stepping it up for the coffee catch-ups. And, well, we've got banners at the bottom. We've got full HD. We really are pretty excited about everything. So what I would like to know is, are you guys able to tune in? Is it looking pretty slick? And what do you think of my home office? You know, we're talking lockdown here. We're in the home office. No virtual backgrounds on this um, platform, but really cool to be able to bring in um, the next level of technology. So jump in the chat. Let us know, um, is it coming through nice, loud, and clear? And um, how is exciting? It's Friday. And now, thanks, Raj. It is looking pretty flash. It's Friday. And, you know, I was on the phone to a couple of people this morning. Actually, I was on the phone with Karen, and we're saying, oh, it's pretty exciting. It's Friday. You know, going to go hang out with our friends, go to the pub. Well, no, it's not going to be happening today. It's not going to be happening now because we're in lockdown. But talking about mates, I've got another one of my really good friends joining us today to talk about his – his journey through through business and some of the really cool things that he's done. He's a, he's an absolute superstar. Uh, many of our advanced students would have actually met Shane over the time and work alongside him. So it's really great to have Shane along. So um, Shane, welcome. Are you there, my mate? I am. I am. Thank you for having me on. It's been a wee while. I thought I would have been a bit earlier than number five, but I've made it. I've made the cut. I think you're about number six or seven, but hey, you are the first one with this really cool oh. uh, platform. So looking cool um, and great to have you here. Um, so for those of you that don't know Shane, Shane is um, a KiwiSaver and insurance specialist um, and not just a specialist, but the best. And there's an award that we can now um, talk about a bit later to um, bring that up. But also on top of that, um, extremely successful in your in your business field um did really well as a as an athlete in a formal life as well and a good friend of mine we've been childhood friends we've known each other probably jeepers must be a few years now when i was about 15 or so i'd imagine yeah well you're the one who gave me my first job actually coaching tennis so you, you know i was i was probably only about i don't know 15 or so at the time 14 or something coaching little kids tennis in the holiday program so yeah it's been a wee while mate yeah we've come come full circle and you know i mentioned it before um the award that you've won and um i think it, we need to open up because it's really quite an achievement and i'm sure you're extremely proud i know you're within a family business and you know you, you work alongside your, your dad and, and your brother within your business um and you know but the award that you went on to win as I'll probably need some corrections here, but it's New Zealand Broker of the Year. Is that correct? Yeah, it was. New Zealand uh, Independent was the other word in there. So the Independent Broker of the Year from New Zealand Business Magazine. So, yeah, it was, it was pretty stoked. You know, like you mentioned, uh, family business, so, so owned by dad. So job security is pretty good. Um, otherwise, you know, family dinners are going to be a little bit awkward. Um, but, you know, just to sort of be able to follow on what he's set up for us and, and what he's sort of done within the field already um, to sort of follow in his footsteps, I suppose, is, is pretty cool. Awesome. So in terms of, of your drive, I mean, I know that you've always had a drive to do better and, and be as, you know, the best self you can. You saw that um, within your, your cricket career. You, you gave it a really good crack as a junior, put a lot of time and effort in, um, played some, um, some you know, fairly high-level first-class cricket, which is a hell of an achievement, you know, very cool. Um, what is it that actually motivates you in order to, to want to do better or, or to be a, the better version of yourself? I suppose about uh, we're just trying to, to fulfil what you're trying to do. Um, you know, I don't like to do things half-assed. You know, if you're, if you're going to give something a crack, you know, I really do like to give it a real good effort. Um, mm -hmm. and, and from that, there'll probably be the process in the sense of your goal setting um, and fulfilling those sort of smaller achievements, which will then sort of land up to being a, a little bit bigger. You know, from the insurance case when I first started, you know, it's it quite daunting. Um, to, to go into that, and you obviously had the different goals and things, but um, yeah, the small steps um, and just sort of being able to fulfill what you believe you can do is, is pretty cool. Yeah, absolutely, and and to, to get rewarded for it as well um, is hugely um, satisfying as well, I'm sure. Yeah, the recognition's always good. It's always a decent way to have a few beers with the boys on the weekend and, and celebrate a couple of good things along the way, so that's, that's always a whole lot. 
So um, talking about having a few beers with the boys on the weekend, we actually play in the same cricket team now. Um, it's not first class cricket, that's for sure. Um, but our team, you know, is actually called here for beer. And I, I was talking to a couple of our boys, and I mentioned that you'd be on the show, and they said, please don't mention the fact that in the final you came out to play. <laughs> We're going to be cut off now. And actually scored <laughs> your Should we talk about that? Hell of a ball, hell of a ball though, wasn't it? Sure, <laughs> we went both ways. We went left, and then it swung back in right, and. Oh. Yeah, you know, it wasn't the finest hour. Yeah, I mean, opening the batting, we lose a batsman. I'm out there, and Shane comes at number three. I'm quite excited. Here we go. And then, yeah, a couple balls later, see you, mate. I'll uh, catch you after. <laughs> anyway, let's move on to uh, uh, some other elements. So, um, in terms of insurance and in terms of KiwiSaver, let's start off with um, KiwiSaver because it's, it's often an element that everybody is involved in. I mean, for you, those of you that in Australia, there's similar elements and, and really you can learn from it in terms of your superannuation because it is run in a very similar um, fashion. In terms of KiwiSaver, everybody is in that position that they have the ability to be on KiwiSaver, but there's so many pitfalls that you see. And I know this is something that you're quite passionate about because it's such a it's such a key element that's so simple they can get such a great reward. So in terms of people's own KiwiSaver, what are a couple of bits and pieces that you would like to recommend or share that could, you know, could improve their situation with their KiwiSaver or, or common things that you see that are not uncritical? Yeah, I, I suppose one of the big ones would be is for, for people to sort of understand where their KiwiSaver is. You know, during the lockdown, it's a great opportunity now for a lot of people to sort of go over their KiwiSaver, have a look and find out if you can find out, A, who is your fund provider? Once you've found that out, who is your fund invested with? So you're in a balanced fund, you're in a growth fund, you're in a default fund. And then from there, have a look at the returns and the fee structure that are within your KiwiSaver as well. The thing we find out the most is a lot of people can't really answer those simple questions. Mm -hmm. A lot of people don't know where it is. A lot of people set it up, you know, got a job, it's on a contract at KiwiSaver, opted in, 3% of my wages go out and I don't really know where the risk goes. You know, so something that is very important is it's a it's a savings schemes where you're straight away getting, if you're putting in 3%, you're getting 150% return on the first $1,042 you put in. Because you put in a dollar, work will put in a dollar, then the government will give you 50 cents up to $1,042. So straight away, your dollar is now valued at $2.50 before any return or any growth. So really important just to understand who is your fund with? Who is it invested with? And are you in a default fund? If you're in a default fund, or another word is cash enhanced fund, um, that is something to seriously consider because your overall returns, your compounding interest will be very low within that fund. However, um, if you do look at a more of an active fund, you need to go through the right process, a risk profile, and a little bit of detail about that as well, um, just to ensure that you are invested in the right setup. Absolutely. And that's some really good advice and something I think everybody should be taking advantage of. Um, you know, talking about using lockdown as an opportunity. Um, I know that you caught a couple of episodes. I'm big on this whole Lockdown, let's <laughs> all you know, my goals for lockdown. And really cool to hear that I even inspired you to get out for a bit of a run. Um, did, how many Ks did you get in there? Yeah, well, uh, you, you did get, I wouldn't call it much of a run, you know. I think <laughs> St. John's wasn't far away from being called at one point of the run. Um, I did get out there, you know. I saw on a few of your Instagrams. I thought, oh, well, you know, if John was out there doing it, I'll, I'll start the pre-season training yep. for the cricket. Um, yep. And went about 200 Ks and literally blew a gasket. Hammies were gone. You know, I was sweat everywhere and just wanted to move it to get home. Well, I suppose the, the, the length of time that you normally bat for, that's probably plenty any, anyway. So. <laughs> yeah. Normally I only make about 200 metres, don't I? <laughs> and that includes walking out. <laughs> um, all right. So yeah, there's some really great tips there in terms of the KiwiSaver. But now let's talk about insurance because this is something I, I know that people can often have, you know, I guess there's a stigma around the insurance and, and getting insurance and, and insurance brokers as well, and yeah, unfortunately. But at the same time, having someone that really looks at the whole thing and making sure that you're getting the best for your buck. I know when we, we catch up, the cool thing is you're normally reducing, you know, what my policies are, are doing, which is amazing. Thank you for that. Um, but what are some of the things that you find when you work um, with people in their insurances and, and things that they need to look out for, be aware of, or or can be smarter about? I suppose the big one is actually just understanding your policy. Um, one of the big things as well, we said our clients is don't review your policies when you make a claim. 
You know, that's the big one. A lot of people just sort of set up their policy, leave it, pay a direct debit, money goes out. The only time they actually sit down to go over their policy is when they actually make a claim. So at that time, a claim is going to be lodged. You're either going to get paid out or you're not. You know, it's really important to review your policy yearly to ensure that what you're doing in the current circumstances is actually relevant to your policy. Um, and again, people, the big thing as well is don't just um, be led down the track of changing your policies because somebody will save you $20, $30 a month. You know, a little bit of additional cash flow now is great, but by reducing the premiums and normally reducing benefits, and if you've got a financial protection policy within place um, to look after yourself, your family, your loved ones, the business, an extra twenty or thirty dollars per month could actually get you tens of thousands of dollars when a claim is actually made. So it's yeah. really important that you sort of understand your policies, and that's you know I do a lot of work with Wealth Mentor as well with, with you guys and, and your family as well, and and that's really cool because you see there the importance of insurance. They sort of understand that, you know, there's been a few really good deals just recently as well, even during lockdown, um, that's, that's come across our desk, which has been fantastic. Um, but those sort of people as well really understand the importance of having the right level of cup. Um, and like you said, for us, it's really important to review it because like you mentioned, we can reduce cover, you know, and that is one of the best parts that we really do enjoy is when we go through, we are able to reduce clients cover because they're normally hitting financial targets, hitting financial goals, which means the risk factor from the insurance piece can slowly start to be reduced. Yeah, absolutely. So just for a bit of context for you guys out there, as the cash flow and the income generated from your portfolios increases, essentially, that gives the ability for Shane and the team to be able to reduce the cover that you need because the risk profile is reduced because you have your passive income. Um, and that's something I know that you get a massive kick out and you work with you know hundreds of our students um, and you, know, you see how many uh, insurance deals are having go through when you talk about fire in general and the housing, but then also being able to reduce people's um, cover is really quite quite cool as well. Yeah, it is. Um, and it's also reducing that life cover, which is quite cool because the debt's obviously reducing as well, which is, which is always handy. Yeah, cool. So um, going back to you as an individual and and your your drive to do better and 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 going through and and I guess achieving the award that you did, which is really quite cool. What are some bits of advice you would give anyone that's looking to get any into any sort of field, whether it's business, whether it's investing, and to strive to to get to that that next level? Um, you know, what what are some things that they could do? Surround themselves with people, goal setting. What is it that you believe are, are key elements for people? I think what's really important is just to find out where you see yourself going. You know, what is your end result? What do you really want? And then work backwards from that. You know, for me, you know, I just, I didn't set out to win these certain awards. I just sort of set out to, to follow within dad's footsteps within the business to be able to set up and work aside him um, and try and to continue to develop the business. Um, and then these sort of other awards, accolades sort of just came as a forefront of that. Um, so it's important, I think, surrounding yourself with people um, and people who you trust is a big one. You know, don't think yes. you've got to do it by yourself. You know, there's, there's better coaches, there's better people, you know, there's people with more information. And that was one of the cool things by following Dan in this industry. He knows a lot of people. Um, so there's been a lot of other mentors I've been able to use and bounce ideas off and be able to create. And now some of them come back to you now as well. And that's pretty cool. People who used to mentor you now come to you for a little bit of advice as well. So those different yeah. kind of things, it's pretty cool. And I think setting yourself up with the right people around side you, knowing where you want to go and having little targets you can tick off as you go is quite important because you know, it can be quite of a lonely road at times and being able to reward yourself and, and tick off milestones as you go and, and celebrating that, um, that's quite important as well. Yeah, yeah, hugely. That's awesome advice. Thanks for that. Um, just in terms of the insurance side, and I'd just like to touch on it because I know that a lot of the people that follow our page are in the property game. Um, so I'd just like to take a couple of minutes just to focus on the property side of things. Um, and I, I know that, you know, there's there's so many different covers in terms of properties and, and the level of insurance depending on where the property is or, or how big it is. You just give a brief overview of as, that people should be aware of when they're looking at and in, in insuring their investment properties or even potentially their homes um, from an you know, from your standpoint. 
So one of the big ones is we're actually talking about it on Monday this week um, with one of our um, insurance brokers as well who does a lot of reinsuring with domestic side and house insurance and, and that component. And they're looking at it now around about three to three and a half thousand dollars per square meter. You know, so that's an average rebuild cost. If you look at your house and yesterday, you know, if your house was 100 square meters, you know, and, and your house was destroyed and it was burned, and we had to remove that property from site to then restart the rebuild and to rebuild it, you're looking at around about $350,000 if you've got 100 square meters. You know, and we looked about 18 months back to two years, you'll be around about $2,000 per square meter. Yeah. You know, so in that 18 month, because of COVID and it's been harder to get wood, being able to bring the wood in, minimum wages increased, all of these different sort of things do actually impact the insurance policies. And that's yeah. where it's quite relevant to ensure you're reviewing it. You know, and if you buy a property in Auckland and it's a million dollars, does not mean you insure the property for a million dollars. Mm-hmm. You know, because you might only have, especially in Auckland, 100 square meters. You know, you might not have that property because you're paying for the area, you don't need to insure the area. Yeah, and that's a big thing. People sort of get a um, real estate appraisal and go, okay, I'll insure it for that. No, and that's where the insurance piece, make sure you're getting advice because that's really what you're paying for is the advice piece within the policy. Cool. Awesome. Hey, guys, while we're going as well, I can see this is really <coughs> cool to see all the viewers on here live and a couple of nice likes and, and um, comments. So please yell out if you have any questions for Shane. Um, feel free to um, drop them in the comment section. They do come through. It would be awesome to hear from you guys. Um, we've got him here, so, hey, we might as well um, you know, use and abuse his knowledge while he's there. Um, so, Shane, what, you know, obviously we really enjoy having you as part of working with the Wealth Mentor team, um, and you know, it's really quite cool in terms of what you are able to assist with our students. One time I remember it may have even managed to save a student, I think it was $5,000 on her um, yearly um, premiums. Now, it was a massive deal, it was a ripper deal, um, but you know that's something pretty special, so thank you for, for doing that. Um, no. Oh, we actually have got a question come through, awesome. Um, I'm gonna see if I can be smart here. Thoughts on underinsuring to a point that could clear your mortgage? From Tim Williamson. So I suppose, is that in relation to your life insurance or do you mean from a no. property? Oh, good question. Hey, Tim, are we talking here? You might have to jump on the comments again, my friend. Um, are we talking in terms of your life insurance or are we talking about the insurance of the property in terms of covering the mortgage? While, I, while Tim answers that one, I want you to start to think about the answer to this because this is my favorite question. I'm always going to end on it. <laughs> what is it? Because you know, you've created wealth through your business and you've done extremely well. What is it that wealth means to you? Okay, hold that thought because that's the question that's oh. going to come back to you very shortly. And Tim has come back with saying it's in terms of the property, in terms of the okay. insurance on the property. So some insurers will have a minimum amount that you'll need to reinsure the property for. So if, for example, you've got 100 square meters and the property, you know, is the value that you should insure it for is around the 300,000, 350,000. And if the existing mortgage was 150,000 on the property, we won't be able to insure the property for 150,000. You know, because the insurer will know, well, we're not going to be able to rebuild anything back to that value. You're going to have a 75 square meter house. You know, if you've got in the double garage, you've already lost, you know, 30 odd square meters. You nearly lost half of the square meter within that side of things here. So we'd always sort of say, if you look at the difference between a premium associated to the difference in the cover, it's not a huge amount. And we would always say, you know, ensure the value of the property. Um, because that is, that, that's what's going to help you. Otherwise, you're just going to increase your mortgage in the last couple of years of reducing your mortgage. You're just going to have to re-increase it if you then need to reinsure the property. Okay, so he's, he's grown on that one, and he said if the loan is 500K, but the rebuild is 2 million, can you cover it at 1 million? It's quite a... For, for 50%, it's probably quite specific. We'll need to know a bit of details and a bit of information about the property, where it is, um, different sort of circumstances can impact it. Different reinsurers and different insurers have different appetite uh, for different types of pop- policies and different type of um, properties as well. So definitely what I can do, though, is I can chuck in um, my details on, on the page. And if you give me a buzz after, Tim, we can have a bit more of a conversation in relation to that particular question. Um, and we can just sort of cover it off for you there. Yeah, I think that's probably the best thing. So um, we'll get you to drop your details and then anyone can reach out to you and, and 
uh, I'm sure there'll be some specific questions in terms of their own um, position. So Tim said, keen for a chat, so I'm sure he'll reach out to you. Um, Perfect. Right, so let's come back to my favorite question, Jono's question. <laughs> Session. Um, what is it for you, Shane, that, that wealth actually means? I suppose the old cliche, um, when, you, when you can wake up and every day feels like a Saturday, you know, there's something about Saturdays that, are, that are just make things a little bit easier. Um, mm. But I also suppose it's about the people you surround yourself with. It's not necessarily a dollar value. Um, you know, if you've got good people around you and you've got a good sort of thing going, you don't need tens of thousands of dollars in the bank account. You know, if you've got some, a, a good group of mates and you've got a good support system and, and you've got a good, you know, family and things around you, I think that's more important than any dollar value um, would be able to give you. You know, it's great to have a bit of money in the bank, but if you've got no one to share with or nobody to enjoy with, um, it's not really... So there's only so many beers you can have, mate, until you sort of get over drinking by yourself, especially found that out this lockdown as well. So that's speaking from a boss. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Oh, it's been an interesting time with lockdown, but, hey, we're all do it, getting through. We're all doing amazing. Um, and it's really cool to have everybody joining us on these coffee catch-ups. Thank you, um, Shane, for joining us today. Um, I appreciate it. Thank you. As always. Um, and like I say every time, guys, I'm keen to have um, anyone that's got anything that they would like to share, whether it's business, whether it's personal, whether it's their property related. I've got some pretty cool guests lined up for next week. I've got a, um, one spot at the end of next week that I'd really like to fill. Um, I've actually got a guest on Monday, and I'm going to drop a little bit of a, a um, hint here. The guest on Monday has nothing to do with property. He's been to the office once, but that was to talk about tennis. He's actually a tennis player, and he has achieved something that nobody else has ever achieved in terms of a result as a tennis player. The, the absolute mental strength of this man um, and his, his drive to succeed is pretty impressive. So you guys really want to jump in on Monday and join this one uh, a little bit different. So please yell out if you can to join us. Shane, once again, mate, you've been a legend. Remember, drop your details into the chat and everybody can find you. Um, it's been a pleasure. Have an awesome weekend. Don't go out partying too much in these crazy lockdown <laughs> times. Get that housework done that just wants you get to get sorted, eh? <laughs> yeah, trust me, there's a huge list. That's can we not extend this? Go a little bit longer <laughs> so I don't have to go start it? <laughs> no, awesome. I appreciate it. Let me come on. So thank you very much. Awesome. Have a great time. Thanks, everybody, for joining us. And everybody, have an awesome weekend. And most importantly, stay awesome.